Hello, my gorgeous friends of Webflow, it's your friendly neighborhood Francesco from Subasado here. Today we're talking about masonry layout in Webflow. You know, that cool Pinterest style layout where items of different heights fit together like magic. Well, Webflow doesn't have a built in masonry feature, but there's a super simple way to achieve it without writing a single line of code. In this video, I'll show you how to build a masonry style layout using Webflow's native tools. Two real-world examples, a testimonial section and an image gallery, a small trick to prevent unwanted content splitting across columns, a smooth and super easy animation to enhance the user experience and, of course, the pros and cons of this approach. So, if you're looking forward to it as I am, stick around and if you're interested in learning more about Webflow or no-code tools, check out our courses on Supersido Academy. Link is in the description down below. And if you find my video helpful and want to support my work, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. But now, if you're ready, let's dive in! Let's start with the first use case, a list of testimonials. Here I have a collection list with the testimonial text, what is supposed to be the picture of the author, and basic author details. Now, instead of using Grid or Flexbox, I will set the columns property of the container holding these items, so the collection list. One single step here. In the style panel, under typography, set columns to 3, or however many you need. And boom, we have a simple, responsive masonry layout for testimonials. The column layout comes with the default gap value between the columns of 1 EM, but we can set it to have a different value, like 1.5 REMs. We also notice that there's no gap between the elements of a single column, but we can quickly fix that by setting the bottom margin of the list item element to 1.5 REMs as well. And what about responsiveness? Well, easy peasy. We can just specify the number of columns we want for the other breakpoints. Let's say we want two columns for tablet and only one column for the landscape and portrait breakpoints. And that's it. Now, back to desktop breakpoint. If we take a closer look at the layout, we realize that something strange is happening. The last item within the first column is actually split between the first and second columns. Hmm, not really what we wanted, right? How to fix it? Let's move to the next example first, and then I'll show you how. But before we actually move to example number two, I wanted to point out that the order of the elements follows a vertical flow, which can be a bit less intuitive in some cases. So, I would say this layout is especially useful when the order of the items within the list is not super important. Now, let's take this idea further and build an image gallery using the same technique. Again, I'm using a collection list, this time containing images. The width of the image is set to 100% to make sure it properly shows up on any browser. Each image will be wrapped in a lightbox component. Now, same process as before. Set the collection list to use columns, three or more, depending on your layout. Then set the column gap and the bottom margin of the collection items. And there you go, a no-code masonry gallery using Webflow's native tools. Now, as promised, Back to the issue of the content breaking across the columns. We can fix this by using a simple CSS trick. Select the collection item, or rather, the direct child of the element we set the column property of, and then, in the style panel, navigate to custom properties, and add break inside avoid. This ensures that each testimonial stays in one column instead of breaking awkwardly between two. To make the layout feel more dynamic, let's add a simple animation. Webflow has a great built-in interaction for this. 
select the testimonial or image item, go to interactions, scroll into view, choose slide, then from bottom, and set the offset, let's say 25%. Before going to preview mode to see how this will look like, let's simulate a situation where the items are not immediately visible within the viewport by setting the top padding of the main container to something like 95pH. Now let's go to preview mode. We can see that as the user scrolls, the items smoothly appear, making the layout feel more alive. And you can do the same thing with a gallery of images, of course. Now, before we wrap up, I really wanted to share with you a quick recap of the pros and cons of this approach, since I do believe we should always be aware of what we are doing when we decide to adopt a certain approach. So, pros. This layout is super easy to set up, literally a few clicks. Also, no custom code is needed, so it's a fully no-code solution. And finally, it's great for dynamic content from Webflow CMS. As for the cons, not a true masonry grid. Items are placed sequentially, so they are not optimally packed. And for this reason, it can leave sensible gaps in certain cases, unlike a JavaScript-based masonry. Also, we have limited control over how elements flow between columns. If you need perfect alignment, you might have to use custom JavaScript, but for many cases, this no-code approach works just fine. And that's it. Now you know how to create a masonry layout in Webflow using just CSS columns. No extra code required. And you also know how to prevent accidental content splitting between columns. Let me know. Have you used this method before, or do you prefer a different approach? Let's chat in the comments. Of course, a link to the clonable for this project is available in the description down below. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more Webflow tips and tricks. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Matane!